Welcome back to The Exchange. The Eurostoxx Bank Index has fallen 10% this week on pace for its worst week in nearly three years. Let's talk about what it means for your money with Jeff Kleintop. He's chief global investment strategist at Charles Schwab and David Katz, who's chief investment officer at Matrix Asset Advisors. Welcome to both of you. And Jeff, remember we were talking about Europe earlier this year. Um, what's your take on the situation there and uh, how much it worsens or doesn't worsen the outlook for the U.S. economy and banks? Well, certainly, uh, despite the sell-off today, it's important to note that the MSCI Europe Financials Index, measuring Europe's banks, is down just 1% year-to-date. That's through today, while the S&P 500 Financials Index is down 9%. Eurozone commercial banks have been able to increase their lending rates more than their deposit rates thanks to very cheap funding under the TLTRO program from the ECB. And as a result, uh, literally, uh, European banks have never been more profitable and never been better capitalized, and that's showing up in the relative performance despite today's worries. I think concerns about a global financial crisis deepening the current earnings and economic downturn is valid, and we'll need to watch that very carefully, watching things like oil prices and repo rates and, and CDS. But I think the biggest concern still for me is inflation and central bank rate hikes. I think we're going to get more of that from uh, the European Central Bank tomorrow, and I think the market may soon pivot back to that and away from fear about a financial crisis. So not to go too far uh, you know, into this, but I'm curious because you mentioned it, would we have been better off if our structure had something more like the TLTROs, uh, their targeted longer-term refinancing operations, always an acronym in Europe, uh, but are they getting the last laugh here because of this scheme and the way that it was set up? I think so. I, you know, a lot of times uh, we're, we look at Europe and say, oh, they're doing too much. They're, 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 there's too much bailouts uh, for their banking system. But in situations like this, it really does pay off. And, that's and look one of the at the bailout now. Seeing... I mean, if you compare it, you say, OK, wow, geez, the European Central Bank keeps coming up with these schemes. Well, what did we just do? We just backstop. I mean, either we have a three tier banking system or we've backstopped a significant portion of deposits in this country. And we have to figure out what we're going to do uh, scheme wise now. Yeah, exactly. I don't think the Fed has had a plan in place or, or, or the FDIC or the Treasury to really deal with this. And they need to put one in place because now they're faced with this difficult question of do we do we look towards financial stability concerns and not hike rates or, or do we get back to, you know, to addressing true financial stability? It, it, it's a real problem. The ECB has the ability to raise rates and still provide a backstop to the banking system. I think we're going to see that tomorrow. All right, David, let's bring you in here uh, with your own view on U.S. financials. What are your thoughts? What are the investments, if any, that you're making as you watch the events of the last five days unfold? I think the best thing that investors can do is to have a sound portfolio, is not get caught up in the day-to-day -day volatility or, or concerns. Look at a 9- to 12-month time horizon. We think this crisis is ultimately going to pass, and we do think that it's going to be a good year for stocks once we get through this. So in, in terms of the financial crisis, we think the Fed, the FDIC, and the Treasury stepped up in a very meaningful way and really put a lot of things in place to have this thing settle down. It's not going to settle down today. It's not settling down this week, but it is going to settle down this month. If that's the case, we think that it, it's going to be a better environment for the overall market on a 12-month basis. And we do think the Fed can slow down and, in fact, stop raising rates at this point. In, in, at a minimum, they will pause because we think inflation has been coming down. This is going to be deflationary. And we think the Fed's primary focus right now is stability to the financial markets. And by the time the financial markets have settled down, we think inflation is going to be continuing to trend lower. What do you own now, David, that might have changed uh, or, or, or that you think sets you up for the kind of year that you foresee with everything going on uh, that we're just talking about? So we have a pretty diversified portfolio. As, as you know from our discussions uh, over the last few months, we do like financials and we do have a lot of financials. Our outlook on financials on a 12-month basis is positive. However, it definitely has more risk than we had thought, uh, and it is going to take a little bit longer, and the upside is, is more limited. Beyond the financials, we do like technology. We do like industrials. Uh, we do like some health care. So we would stick to diversified portfolios. Utilities, which have been doing pretty poorly this year, we think in an in interest rate environment where the Fed is going to stop being as hawkish should have a nice rebound. So there are lots of places to make money out there this year. In terms of financials, focus on the best financials, highest credit quality. Uh, we don't think you want to chase yield with lower quality financials uh, because we think you're going to make money in the bigger ones without significant risk or as significant a risk.